are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Good morning, everybody. This is Colin Austin, and this is the WHOA GNB Podcast. We have a couple of... (laughs) <laughs> That's that Cuban coffee I was talking about. <laughs> we have a couple of really special guests, the owners of Access Chiropractic with us this morning. You guys say good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I'm going to get into more intros and let you guys introduce yourself. But first, Ty, my, my man, founder of Best of Gainesville. What's what's happening in the Best of Gainesville world this week, my man? There's a, there's a decent amount of stuff happening. Uh, first off, I wanted to say happy Father's Day to both you and Alex. Thank you. And, uh, Aww. Appreciate that. Aww. So I know sweet. I know the podcast is a little bit time stamped, so people won't get this before what's going on. But you can find it on Best of Gainesville always for what's going on. And uh, there's a lot of cool Father's Day stuff. I know Cypress and Grove's doing kind of a burger or a bacon beer World Cup thing for all dads. Free beer, free bacon. So it's pretty cool. And uh, we'll have some more stuff on Best of Gainesville. Yeah, awesome. We should let everybody know. So because you're probably gonna listen to this two and a half three weeks from from now and be like, oh, Father's Day was three weeks ago. We do pre-record these because there's a lot of editing involved. If you guys, you know, again, I know that the audio is a completely different side of this game, but we are really doing some cool things with the video side of this and incorporating B-roll into the podcast when people are telling their stories and we show a little bit about their business and just uh, just some really, really cool stuff. And so that's like why the post-production is a little is a little delayed by a couple weeks or so. And um, so everybody knows this place, the studio, New Scooters for Less, gets really busy in the month of August. <laughs> so we wanted to make sure that we had a lot of content to post throughout the month of August when this place is cranking. And um, that requires filming two episodes a week right now, which has been a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> so we're filming, that way we can post these in those months ahead. So we're gonna take a recording break, if you will, during the month of August. Um, so we can hustle out a bunch of scooters onto the roads of Gainesville. <laughs> so, so thank you for cooperating. Um, Jackie, Alex, good morning. Good morning. Welcome, good morning. Welcome good morning. to our good podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank we, you. We are stoked to have you guys. And um, I want to uh, just kind of dive into your story, like what led you to Gainesville, what led you to having this chiropractic center and uh, you know what you do every day. Yeah. Um, first, can I totally say thank you for that awesome welcome from your little like Juan Carlo kitty cat. What's his name again? Huli. Oh my gosh, that was the coolest thing ever. Yes, there are cats in the dealership that found, that they, the they found us. They oh, found us. They so showed sweet. up one day. And we can't have one because he's like deathly allergic. So yeah, they're like we can't have it inside the studio because Alex will be talking. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for the warm welcome. Up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you. Yeah, so I was uh, born and raised here in Gainesville, um, Alachua General Hospital, like right down the road, not there anymore. Me too. Yep. <laughs> Were you um, really? Yeah. God, you guys, ACRs. <laughs> true and true. Um, and then I met Jackie. Um, she came here to play volleyball, so I'll let her tell that Go story. Go Gators. <clears throat> as to like why she chose Gainesville. But we met when I was about 17. Um, she was a smidge older than I was in college. Um, and <laughs> we, <laughs> that's a funny It's story. already beginning. All right. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, so I uh, told her I was a senior, didn't tell her I was in high school, and a uh, pretty big guy, so she didn't really know what my age was. And we just hit it off from the, from the get go. So by the time she found out I was a senior in high school, it was, it was too late. Um, she was already hooked. And. <laughs> and uh, we've been dating for, or dating, we're married now for the last nine years. Um, been together for almost 15 here in October. So pretty cool. We got four four little kids, <laughs> six, five, two, and seven months. So Wow. We're, uh, That's got to keep you busy. Yeah. Well, for sure. <laughs> it's no joke. Um, but, you know, she's a... Uh, She's uh, my ride or die, we call her, right? She's the that's one right, that's that me. <laughs> goes to bat for me if I need it. And um, there for my good days, there for my ba- good for my bad days. And Thanks, that's, babe. Yeah. That's so sweet. So go ahead and tell them why you chose Gainesville. Why, why? Yeah, so you came from... from I where? am from California. Okay, and you were... T- so <laughs> she was telling me before the podcast, you're from 
Where specifically? Well, I went you, to high school. you went to high school. Right. I went to high school in Merced, California, which apparently is totally high up on the worst places to live in America list. Yeah, so I don't know if everybody in Gainesville has seen this list yet, but it's it's gotten out there. I guess it was in USA Today of like the top 50 yeah. worst places to live in America or something. One, I can tell you, it's not true. <laughs> Gainesville is freaking awesome. It's one of the reasons why we're doing this, to show you a lot of the talent and a lot of everything that's coming out of this place. Um, I can say, so do you, you don't know what they were ranked? You said 20 something? It was like 26, 23, yeah, somewhere 26. in there. 26, Mercedes. oh you got it right there? 26, yeah. Okay, I mean, if, if there's any good news about being on this list, um, Tallahassee was ranked higher than us. Yeah, <laughs> that's I mean, a given. Florida State Seminole, they're like number thirty-eight. <laughs> Knoxville was number thirty-six. So Miami, was it Miami on there too? Miami's Miami, like yeah. So, <laughs> so stick it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so you came from California. <clears throat> yes. So why Gainesville? Um, you know, I was an athlete. I ended up, you know, playing volleyball, really loving it. Um, and I could have gone anywhere. Uh, Except Stanford, 3.5 GPA wasn't going to cut it for them. <laughs> but I, I pretty much, um, you know, could have gone where I wanted to. And there was something about Mary Wise. You know, I didn't just, like, look at schools first. I always wanted to, like, get to know the coaches first and, like, you know, fall in love with them. And she was amazing. And even my mom liked her. <laughs> and my grandma liked her. You guys don't know her, but... yeah. Yeah. If she liked like, you, if she gave you her stamp, yeah. you're good to go. I was like, oh my gosh, my grandma likes her. Um, I just agreed to come out here for a visit. And even though I'm not a fan of heat in general or giant sized bugs, I just came out here and <laughs> fell in love with everything. And I'm like, you're kidding me. My parents went to UCLA. Um, and so for me, to having like the football stadium on campus, what is that? Yeah. That's crazy. Like, you don't have to drive to the Coliseum or anything like that. Um, the fact that the volleyball facilities and all the women's sports were just as nice as the men's, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, this is just way too cool. That's how we get you. I know. <laughs> we, if we can just get you to actually come and I take know. a visit, you That's get hooked. That's, That's what right. it, Yeah, she was my first visit. I had five lined up. Um, University of Florida was my very first visit. I committed here on my visit, just like, that was it. It was. It was just, it was love at first sight. I was so happy. And so, then I married this this guy, and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so what years were you in school? Um, I arrived on campus uh, 2000. Yeah, me too. Yay! So we went to school at the same time. Oh my gosh, Because I went from so 2000 cool. to 2004, and then I started this place in 2004. Oh, that's awesome. When I say this place, I'm talking this about place. new scooters for less, <laughs> mm -hmm. for everybody who's listening. Um, awesome. Well, I love my, I love that time. 2000, 2004 was epic. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Did you playing two Final Fours, a national championship her senior yeah, year? Yeah, I did. It was very fun. It was, yeah, great times. All of those girls were in our wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had, and then, you know, you and, and Ty, your friends, everyone is pretty tall. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the world's tallest, like, bridal party ever. <laughs> all the girls, maybe with the exception of one or two, are over 6'1". And then all your friends, with the exception of one or two, are like six, four and up. <laughs> we mm -hmm. were just like this giant tribe walking down. <laughs> that, that's awesome. It's so what, what led to um, the start of your business? So chiropractic um, has always been something that I've done as a, you know, my family has been big into it. We've kind of gone the, let's try um, to let your body take care of itself first before we go get any medicine, get anything like that. Um, Jackie's family has always been really into chiropractic as well. Her dad, um, she didn't tell you, played 13 years in the NFL. And he attributes chiropractic to kind of giving him three extra years in the league, um, mm -hmm. just kind of taking care of his body that, that route. So some of our best friends when we were in college were um, Kyle Jackson, he played football here, and his wife Erica. And um, Erica's dad was a chiropractor, and they were going to chiropractic school. So we graduated, kind of didn't know what we were going to do. Um, I was more in the athletic department kind of backside, like the administration part of it. That's that's the career path I was heading towards. And so they said, hey, why don't you come um, check out the school, check out the campus, and come shadow Erica's dad for about a week. After a week of shadowing Erica's dad, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest business practice. Patients love you, you get to take care of them, you get to help people, you get to just kind of become, it's almost like a family, like at the practice. So after that, I was like, Jackie was like, yeah, why don't you know go to chiropractic school? You're smart enough. You can do it. There's no question. She's like, I'll work. Um, 
It a million just, jobs. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Why you she go to did school? Everything. <laughs> um, so we went through school, and then when we were done with chiropractic school, it was kind of um, her dad, like I said, played for the Raiders. So we went out to Oakland, shadowed the Oakland Raiders chiropractor, um, took us through the training, uh, the athletic training center, and everything like that. And they actually asked me to come and do an internship with them which I was like, oh my God, this is great. We're gonna get to go to California. She's gonna be happy with the weather. And literally like three weeks before I was going to do my internship, the chiropractor called me and was like, hey man, I sold my practice. Uh, there's not really any room for an internship. And Mind her, you, we have an infant and I'm pregnant with baby number right? two. Oh <laughs> so, man. So these plans had like been in the works. This It's not like a, okay, let me audible real quick. It's like, I have to think about everything that comes into consideration. So I got some job offers from um, some people in Austin to go, but ultimately we we're like, why don't we just go back to Gainesville? Like we love it. Like it's the perfect town to raise a family in. Um, we can kind of, I can learn more about the business. We can get things going. I can learn from other chiropractors here because we have some great chiropractors in town. Um, Gainesville just has a lot of great business owners in general. But I got my feet wet for the first about two years. Um, started Access Chiropractic three years ago. Um, and we just hit the ground running ever since. And you told me that you work with a lot of the athletes mm -hmm. today, right? Yep, I work with a lot of athletes. Um, I've had some professional baseball players, some professional volleyball players, some UF athletes that have come by. Um, so working with athletes is a lot is a big part of what we do because it it's some of the people that they can tell the instant change that you give them um, whenever you you know make them perform better, make them move better. They're going to know right away because they're doing these things every single day. Whereas, you know, a person that maybe sits at a desk job all day isn't going to know the adjustments right away because they're not using those joints per se. They're going to feel better. But an athlete is going to know instantaneously, you know, based on how they perform, how much better they're feeling. When did you guys decide to bring the kids into the mix? <laughs> In chiropractic school? Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, let's just throw one more thing at yeah. us. No big deal. Yeah. Um, In chiropractic school. Mm -hmm. We wanted four always. Mm -hmm. um, the first two are 16 months apart. That was a little closer. <laughs> yeah, the timing was a little fun, but um, we wanted four. We got four, and we just, they're perfect. They were so excited about this. It was like, sorry, girls, you can't come. We can't bring the baby. They wanted to be on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have so they, many cool points right they'd now. They'd be amazing them. guests, too. Oh, yeah. they're, oh. they're on the board. Oh, thank you. We should do like they a love whole you. kid episode once. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they'd so be awesome. Just put like two kids on each mic. And they pretend them. that they have their own YouTube channel already, and it doesn't matter if they're pretending with the phone in front of them or they sit in front of the mirror and they act like they're doing these cool shows. And I'm like, oh my gosh. That's so crazy. We kind of got into that at the end of the last episode. And I mean, it's just incredible to watch kids watching YouTube videos of other families yeah. going on Disney trips and stuff and I'm just like man yep, they have their favorites they do yeah they, they love it and yeah, they also absolutely. like those weird videos where people sit and open like gifts and like yeah. little eggs I'm like Peasants why do you stuff? watch these right it's, <laughs> I don't know it's so strange it is I don't know I'm gonna have to like figure that out because I just can't seem to wrap my head around <laughs> it's a new, new market it's at all that's right Colin unwrapping a scooter box and yeah. putting it together. <laughs> there you go. They'd probably be like, this is not exciting at all. <laughs> that's what that's what they would say. They'd be like, this is not exciting at all. Well, maybe a little back to school. You can stuff the seats with different things. The unveiling. Be like, open it up. Balloon pops out with some, yeah. some new toy inside. Yeah. Yeah. I see yeah. all these light bulbs going off in front yeah. of you guys. Is that, that's what happens. You start a conversation, <laughs> light bulbs start going off. I'm over here taking notes, writing, right. much, writing things down as fast as possible. <laughs> So, well, and one of the things that I forgot to mention at the beginning of the podcast is like, so all of these episodes are releasing in July and they're all husband and wife episodes. So this is really nice. fun for, nice. for us because it's like, all right, we get, to, we get to see what it's like for a husband and wife to work together, the challenges of that, and see how it compares over five weeks. <laughs> um, so tell me, like, what is the, what's been like the greatest part of working together? Ooh, can I go first? Absolutely. Okay. So since we have four children, um, you know, being able to work with your husband, it's like, hey, this kid's got the flu. I got to go. And he's like, okay, great. Thank you. Please leave and take care of our family. Um, so for me, that was the, the coolest thing about working together. And you don't really get that in any other job. You know, no one really, you know, nobody else cares more about your kids, you know or as much as you do than your, your spouse. So, so just a lot of flexibility. It really mm -hmm. was, it's, yeah, the best part. Or 
you know, sometimes just bringing them to the office and it being okay with your boss. <laughs> <laughs> quotes. You saw those quotes, right? Boss. boss. <laughs> and, and just to jump in, I think one of the one of the great things. Alex and I are friends. We've been friends for a long time since we played um, probably AAU basketball back in middle school. Um, but for someone, I'm also a client of of his, and he's an absolutely incredible chiropractor. But uh, getting to see the interaction when I come into the office, Jackie, if Jackie's there, you know, it's so happy. You know, the smiles. You know, right away, you feel like you're at home. Um, you know, they're both such amazing people, and it shows in that office they've already changed uh, buildings you know they have a new house um, for the business it's already growing and I think once you go to access chiropractic and meet Alex and Jackie and you see them together and you see their interactions you just you're not going anywhere else you know and uh, plus it's nice to feel really good and uh, they, they really take care of you it's it's special oh, yeah, well, I, met, I mean you. I met Alex for the first time when 10 you said 10 months ago or it was probably like, I think last ago. July like I literally was like schedule me a meeting before August because I know he's not gonna have any other time <laughs> okay. yeah and I just because I remember like the, um, you know one of the things that a lot of people tend to reach out to me for is, is help when it comes to like mission vision and values and I remember that we had sat down and had a conversation about core values and how these are like really guided principles when it comes to entrepreneurship. Uh, you know the the accountability factors of your business, and um, and that's when I was like, yeah, man. Like anytime somebody cares that much, you know, and they're putting in that much effort, I I don't know. It just means it stands out. You know what I mean? So and, and that's cool to see how you've like. And it's it's cool now because <laughs> Alex said he'll we'll Snapchat back and right, forth. Right, right, like right. you were asking me questions via Snapchat about yeah. like uh, hiring, hiring yeah. processes yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, dude. Like no, like don't <laughs> don't, right, right. don't do that. Right, you know. Right. It's, uh, no, uh, it, it was cool. Um, you know, we had that fourth baby seven months ago. So her the flexibility she talked about. Um, if she needed to take some time off, we were able to afford. To that's get our boxing gym next door. New staff. I was like, what? It's I was like, on. I hear him with the headphones on. <laughs> oh my gosh! So uh, we're gonna have to have him on the next podcast. Yeah, we yeah. need to like let them see this so they understand what happens in here. So right. I apologize. We'll no go. They do. We'll they do work hard. They see. work hard over there. They do. I was I was uh, going past them this week, and I'm like, maybe I should maybe I should go to Gladden. So yeah, <laughs> maybe yes. we should take some classes we need, <laughs> and record it and put it <laughs> put them on have it on the podcast, but right. then have us. Like, yeah, yeah, we can video fight. of us. Yeah. beating each other up. Yeah. that'd be great. That'd be good. Who do you think will win? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm you'll have to I'm go to the chiropractor sneaky. after I'll yeah. throw that. <laughs> I'll, help I'll help you out. <laughs> so No, cool. but I'm glad Tyree you brought that up because it's one like you were asking about some of the bonuses of working with um, your spouse. Um, obviously I love her, so I'd want her to, <laughs> to be in front of as many people as she can promoting the business because nobody's gonna care about my business as much as my wife. So it's kinda like the kid thing she said, where nobody's gonna understand kid issues as much as your husband or wife. Nobody's going to love the business or care about it or care about the people inside of the business as much as my wife because it directly reflects how we perform as a family as well. So that was one of the reasons I wanted to. And then that smile, I mean, it gets everybody in the door and <laughs> yeah, kind of keeps them happy. So And, and a lot of the clients sometimes can be very injured or, mm -hmm. you know, they're not maybe that happy to go there for the first time. It's something new or something they have to do. And, you know, they may be they create such a nice atmosphere in there. It's something you look forward to. One, you're gonna feel better, but two, you get to have a little conversation and you know talk to some people that, that really wanna listen and, and help you out. Absolutely. Thank you. It is fun being up front. Yeah. It is, you know, everybody, you get to know the your patients and you know, I can't tell you how many people brought us baby gifts mm -hmm. um, just because they were so excited for us and with us that we were, you know, having number four and, and that it was a boy. <laughs> That's um, cool. Yeah, but people, you just get to really know them, and you look forward to them coming in. And you know, you know they're in pain. You're sorry that that's why they're there. But um, we just have a lot of really great patients, and it's fun sitting up front. And and people always apologize for bringing their kids in with them. I'm like, oh, please, this, <laughs> this is the place. If All there's right. anywhere else in town where you can bring kids and be fine, it's here. <laughs> Yeah, so tell us the truth now. <laughs> no, so uh, the no, hard no, parts, so, you want, there's hard parts too. It's not all like easy. Um, obviously, you have I mean, to, do you get tired of each other? Seeing each other all the time? Well, she, yeah. Well, <laughs> I saw that face, right? Like, well, uh, like, yeah, not yeah. as often as you would think, but I have to tell this one story. Uh oh. 
I have no idea what story this is. <laughs> we hadn't hired a, uh, a cleaning company to come in and clean the office yet, and he just strolls up from his desk, <laughs> <laughs> and he asked me to vacuum. <laughs> and I just, I guess the look on my face was like, you want me to vacuum at home and here? <laughs> H, no. And I didn't really have to say anything. I just looked at him and he was like, you know what? There's no one here. I'll do it. <laughs> I was like, okay. Not many of those moments, but you know, those are the times where you're just like, oh my gosh, I work with my husband. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's clear that it's the defining of roles, right? Because there's roles that we have as husband and wife at home. Um, or like she said, maybe she vacuums, or I'll wake up early with the kids and cook breakfast. Like there's different routines that we have. So trying to balance that and then switch it over to the <laughs> business where there's different routines and different protocols, um, that was probably the biggest challenge. And you always have to like tread lightly. Like I never came at her and was like, do this right now, like as a <laughs> boss kind of thing. Like I don't talk to my employees now like that, but I would never do that to her. I would kind of say, you know, hey, what if we did this, or I did this and you did that kind of thing. Just defining those roles and being able to flip that switch from home to work um, was something that was probably the biggest challenge, but it wasn't that hard of a challenge. And also, not calling him babe or honey, and I love you <laughs> in the office. <laughs> Sweetheart, your yeah. next patient's here. No. <laughs> it's, uh, Dr. Alex will be with you in just a moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that was I mean, tricky. do when a lot of people walk in, do they know that you guys are married? Actually, uh, no, no. Unless no. they're you know friends of ours from the past, you know they'll find out eventually. But I don't just say hi. I'm Dr. Alex's wife. You know, welcome. You know, we Can just you try that one, like for a week, <laughs> right? And just like in for <laughs> let us know how that goes. Well, when, when she was out with the baby, a lot of people would come in and be like, "Hey, where's Jackie?" And I'm like, "Well, she's home with the baby." They're like, "Didn't you just have a baby?" I'm like, "Yeah." Jackie with her. Is my wife. Like, that's <laughs> They're like, what? I've been coming here for a year. I had no idea. <laughs> well, you know. So it's fun. It's fun to kind of surprise yeah. people. We're not keeping it secret or anything. Right, We're right. just, you know, if it, I don't want people to feel uncomfortable. Like, oh, I can't say anything because that's his wife. Right. So uh, gotcha. the funny yeah. thing is, like, when I worked at other chiropractic offices, like, you would talk about your wife. Um, like, my the people I worked for and myself would talk about our wives, and, like, people would be like, oh, I really want to meet her. Like, it was some mystery. Like, who is this person? Do you really have a wife kind of feeling? Um, <laughs> so for her to work at the front and then still not know, it's kind of, it, it's extra <laughs> funny, you know? It's like, I need to meet your wife. Well, you met her just two seconds ago. She just <laughs> took that in. <laughs> That's awesome. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So what's been, Good like, the, what's the biggest challenge? I mean, just as business owners in general, I mean, your company, you said, is how old? You, Three years three this years. June. We're, we're going into year three. So, I mean, by definition, technically a startup. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's been the biggest challenge for you guys? So it's always um, getting new patients. Um, you know, how are you gonna get that next person to walk through the door? Um, we try to set a goal for number of new patients each month because there's been research that shows when you hit a certain number, that means your office is still growing. Um, thankfully, we've hit that number every month, so we're still in the growing process, but eventually it'll plateau where you'll see a couple new patients, you just can't afford any more growth without bringing on another doctor or something like that. So it's always the most difficult part is getting new people through the door. Um, we've done that through some like business networking here in town. Um, just word of mouth has probably been our biggest. Um, I mean, if you wanna get down and dirty into like what I struggle with getting new people in, like, cause I feel like people probably would wanna hear that. There's other business owners out there that maybe struggle with the same thing. I get the, I'm the type of where I, there's so many things I wanna do that I just get overwhelmed and do almost nothing. You know what I mean? Like you freeze and it's like, you can't do that. I absolutely have to just tell myself, all right, go do this next thing or go call this person or go do this. And there's just a long list, oops, sorry, long list. And you're like, I, I don't know which one to do first kind of thing. So that's been my biggest struggle. She's been the one where I'm like, hey, what do you think about this, that, or the other? She's like, you need to do this. Don't worry about those other things. Like, <laughs> go do this first. Um, What's been the most effective thing that you've done? Um, honestly, it's the network business networking group. Um, just finding other people to connect with that would be direct like referral kind of partners for myself. <clears throat> um, obviously, it's gonna be easier for, let's say, a PI attorney to refer me a patient because somebody that's been in a car accident than you know, another business where they have no you know, idea as to what type of client. You know what I mean? Like it's, there's different referral partners that are easier to refer. So it's meeting those people 
um, getting the, the word out about the business and just letting them meet me or Jackie to see like, hey, we're you know normal people. We're going to take care of your clients. We're going to do good work. Um, it's just getting that opportunity. So it's been fun. Like it, it's fun meeting new people and then seeing stuff succeed. Um, meeting with you guys has been awesome, right? You both are killing it on social media, and that's one of those things where I'm like, which one? Where do I start? Like, what do I, I do know, first? I don't know what the definition of killing it is. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. I just like use it a lot. Yeah, I think it's, it's strange because I feel like when I really focus on the numbers, you know, like, oh, like this many followers or this or this much engagement. Or I feel like when I like really focus on it, I do worse, <laughs> you know? But when when I'm just like doing my natural thing, picking up the phone, doing a snap whenever it feels natural and just not not planning. I mean, I, I do think you have to plan some s- social media. There need, does need to be uh, a reason and a purpose to, to what you're doing is from a business standpoint and that kind of thing. And that purpose should really be to build relationships with your customers, um, not to market your company. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> uh, I can talk about that stuff all day long, but I just feel like it, it's been more effective when I'm not as planned. Yeah, I think definitely the, the more you connect with the people without selling them, right. the more powerful it is. Um, that's something that we always try to kind of walk the line with, you know, as we've grown, there's been more and more and more opportunities and more people that want to work with us and just trying to still provide those original clients or, you know, people that are interested in what you're doing, still the same value as you did day one. I think it's tough for everybody. Um, you know, talking about social media, things change all the time too. So looking at the numbers, numbers don't matter as far as maybe today, it's like, can you project out where the number's gonna matter in six, eight, 10 months? And uh, just kind of staying nimble and looking at other businesses, I think always kind of, not just having an eye on your competition, but different industries, you know, whatever it is, like I watch your stuff, you know, I'm looking at different chiropractors and stuff, and we've done a little bit on Instagram before, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's always very interesting to me. I feel like you can never really consider yourself an expert because someone's always doing it tons better, or they figure it out, you know, ways to hack it. Um, the one thing I'm always interested with business owners like Alex and Jackie, you know, where where have you been leaning on kind of building your network, or maybe what are some of the pockets growing up here and moving back here that you've you've kind of found as far as different circles of people or different places that you attend, and then where what are the things that you have been like thinking about that you haven't gotten to that you'd really like, you know, to to kind of jump into and maybe we can help you out on that or who, you know, who you who you looking to meet in town? So uh, primary care providers are huge. Um, I don't know if you know Lisa McGarry and Della um, Tootin over at Celebrate Primary Care. Yeah, we need to get them on. They're crushing they're, it. Okay. Their business is unbelievable. But they are a new thing where it's like this like we said, family atmosphere for the doctors to come in and they literally care about you. They will email you at 5 a.m. if you email them kind of thing where you have this direct con- contact with them. Um, and they'll you know, say, hey, if you have low back pain, you sure I can give you some medicine, but why don't you go see my friend Alex? He's a chiropractor here. He'll get you, you know, feeling good for a lot less money and it'll actually fix the problem. Um, so primary care providers like that that realize there's a more conservative, cost-effective way to fix aches and pains like neck pain, back pain, headaches, stuff like that, those are absolutely direct referral partners. That would be great um, to have. Yeah, that's super cool. I didn't I didn't know about them. That's and they're that's really, really cool. wonderful. Yeah, that's people. awesome. They are great. They have four really wonderful. practitioners. Um, I think three nurse practitioners and an MD that all work together right off Newberry Road. Um, they're just awesome people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice because Gainesville's got kind of that holistic approach mm-hmm. side to it. And we obviously with Shans in the medical community, it's a world renowned oh, venue. Yeah. And it's if we can kind of press those together and just think more clearly of how to, you know, help the patient, I think, you know, it makes this, you know, it's better than the number 48 worst place to live. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 for sure. yeah, Close. that's so that's terrible. <laughs> Do you guys feel like you have a hard time educating Customers, I don't know, patients, I guess. Yeah, um, so a lot of people. I was trying to find, find that word that wasn't customers. <laughs> yeah. well, when people patients. say like, uh, 
oh, you know, you're going to crack my back. Like, I'm not cracking anything. Oh, I know. You hate when people say that. Like, that's cracking. Or, (laughs) you know, people are like, you're going to break my back. Like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm not. I'm just helping you move a lot better. I'm just getting a restricted joint moving a lot better. Um, So that's why we call it an adjustment rather than cracking or anything like that. I like when Um, every now and then you get someone say, I need him to snap my neck. I'm like, no. (laughs) No, no, I don't (laughs) do that. We don't do that here. (laughs) We don't do that. So it's more about educating as to what... um, what's actually going on within the body when you do get an adjustment. Well, and you, you get, um, you know, I don't want to say quite a few, but there are some people who come in who have had bad experiences with, mm. you know, other chiropractors, you know, and they think they're all quacks and, you know, they're afraid. Mm. But the cool part for us is that there was still something left in them where they're like, I bet I can find a good one. I think this will actually work, you know, if I find someone who really knows what they're doing and who cares about his patients. And then they find us, they find you. <laughs> and then you know, then they become believers and they see how much better that they feel. But yeah, we do deal with that. People running into bad, bad stuff. Well, I can say even from like, you know, a retail business standpoint, it's, it's been challenging because I mean, we, you know, people will automatically leave a negative Google review Mm -hmm. because versus, versus like contacting our business you know, if somebody has an issue or something doesn't go quite right or something, instead of contacting us and giving us the opportunity to fix it, they'll just leave a bad review, yeah. right? And and the reason that is is because they've had bad experiences somewhere. Like 99% of our bad reviews have come from people who never bought a scooter from here. <laughs> they they bought it from they bought it from somewhere else. So they've already been, in my opinion, I think have just had an issue with customer service mm-hmm. somewhere else or whatever the case is. They they came to us. And maybe you know it, things just didn't work out exactly like they thought I was going to, or there's miscommunication somewhere, and right. and leads to a bad review. Um, and so I just think, I guess my point being is that sometimes like the industry or other things, other businesses can really give your own business yeah. <laughs> a, a bad, a negative perception sometimes yeah. because people don't realize like, hey, no, our number one core value is to create and recreate the ultimate customer experience. That means we're gonna bend over backwards to, to you know, take care of you, whatever the problem might be. Um, and so I don't know, I just think that's, I think that's interesting because I think you're right. I think so many people just make that assumption that right. uh, mm-hmm. like, you're not gonna be able to take care of me or it is a quack or whatever, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a a really good point with the reviews, and they have a spectacular review record. I think they're all five stars on Google and and Facebook. It's pretty impressive. Um, (laughs) Would you you cry if you got a four star? You know, I'm not a four star. Maybe if somebody gave me a bad review, I'm one of those people where I'm like, take it personally, right? I do. I take it. I mean, I still take it personally to this day. Yeah. You know, like if we get a one star review, I'm like, man. I'm like, what happened here? I instantly, instantly screenshot it, send it to Mike or general manager. I'm like, can you please look into this? Talk to the sales team, find out what happened. And, we, and then we go like all in trying to get in touch with the customer, right. figure out exactly what happened. They never told us what happened here in front of us. They, you know what I mean? And it's just like, man. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, maybe as you know, technology grows, there's going to be some better review apps because it's it's really hard to. You know, and I've done golf industry and restaurant stuff, and it's like, you know, sometimes with that kind of negative Yelp reviewer, I'm gonna be a powerful food blogger, whatever it is, you know, <laughs> they get on a power trip and it takes forever to kind of erase that review or reply to it, it's hard, um, but it's nice when the business reaches out, hopefully those people will, you know, reverse their review or, or do something different, and uh, I think just responding to negative reviews shows the next person, it's like, well, you know, they've got a hundred good reviews and two bad ones. They respond to the bad ones. It doesn't seem like a real thing. That's almost the best thing you could ever do as a business. No, of course. Like anybody who ever gets a bad review. I mean, I, I preach that day in and day out. Like at that point, you respond. Well, you try to get, you know, try to figure out what happened. Try to take care of it. If the person is just adamant about not taking it down. I'm never coming back. What? Then, then you respond professionally and you say, I'm so sorry that this happened. We're gonna work harder to make sure it doesn't happen in the future to our other customers. You know, you make sure that the next customer that reads that, that's what they're, you know, that's what they're reading. They know that you that you care, that you're authentic about fixing the problem. So, so that, that's advice for you when you get your first one star. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, like keep up the five stars. Right, right. About, but I mean, it's just, uh, it's, I guess it's crazy when you get to, I think, I don't even know how many reviews we have, 200 something, uh, wow. three, maybe close to, I don't, I don't even know anymore. Um, 
Do you guys incentivize reviews at all? No, the, you know, the one thing that we tried, uh, so we've done a couple things. We used to like do like a $5 uh, gift card to Starbucks and we used to, you know, just for taking the time, we never said, hey, it's, like, exactly. hey, leave us a good review. We never yeah. said that. It was just like, thank you for taking the time to leave a review, but that got some pushback. And I was like, all right, you know what we're gonna do? For every review that we get, um, we're gonna donate $5 to Dance Marathon. Cause oh, now it's like, now it's like, all right, idea. so like, you're not getting the money, you're not getting anything for leaving a review, we're gonna give it to somebody else, right. you know, to this charitable organization, all we're asking is for you to take the time. Even that got some pushback. Oh. So yeah, so we just mm -hmm. look for the opportunity. When somebody says, What you was guys, the pushback from that? Because that seems like know. something I, as a community, you know, giving reviews, that'd be a cool thing. I don't know, maybe it was just, you know, one or two people. Okay. You know, I think, I think when it comes to, <laughs> I mean, because we all know that when somebody wants to leave a, you know, a, when somebody wants to review your business, like if you, it's the keeping coffee going through me right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's much It's much more challenging to get somebody to take the time to leave a good review. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're, you're lucky if they tell one other person, right? right. It's that word of oh, mouth, absolutely. and usually it clicks when they say, "Oh man, you know, I'm really having this pain." It's like, "Oh, you need to go visit my buddy Alex." Right. He has this, you know. And you know, Alex and Jackie, they have this place. Go, go check them out. They'll take great care of you. Like those are. You're lucky if you get that, right? Right. Absolutely. But if somebody has something bad to say, oh man, they can't. Social wait to media. Tell. You're right. not going to believe what happened to me today. <laughs> da, 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 da. They're telling the entire world, That's right? True. So, That's true. Um, and then if somebody, if you hear have somebody like pat you on the back, man, you guys just so like are so great. Thank you so much for your help. And you say, well, you know what? That that means a lot to me. Would you mind like leaving mm -hmm. leaving a review on Google for us and just saying something? We just got to have like, your Alexa your listening, and it posts straight straight to Google reviews. Do what? Be the new app. Like an Amazon Alexa, you just need to have it oh. with you at all times. If you get a little good testimonial, <laughs> it posts right away. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. I like that. Team. <laughs> Making it easier. Yeah. Light bulb. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's challenging to get them to take the time to to leave a you know a good review. Oh, absolutely. But you have to just look out for those those moments and then I guess just, just ask. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've, definitely never had success with incentivizing. It just makes it look unauthentic, even though it was always authentic. It's yeah. like, we never, we're not, like if you think we deserve a bad review, leave a bad review, but we just want you to leave a review, take the time. Right. Um, and, and I know, and I'm, this thing is I'm confident, because in our team, our team does a fantastic job. You know, we built one of the top dealerships in the country. It's not because of delivering bad service, I'll tell you that, you know, yeah. it's because of how much we care. Right. So. Anyway, didn't mean to go on a tangent about <laughs> about, about reviews or anything. I think it's very interesting on all businesses because everyone does it a slightly different way. You know, some people ask for it, you know, up front, and I don't think anyone's exactly sure even now um, how to ask for it. There's a lot of third-party apps that'll send emails out, and it doesn't seem that personal. And it's it's just you know, I'm I'm always looking for that for different kind of industries I or different clients I help, but uh. Yeah, it's just, it's a, that's a 10 podcast series yeah. on reviews. I think it's just important, you know, ultimately it comes down to reputation, right? Absolutely. Like you want, you if, if you really care about your business, which all of us do, I mean, it's, you're, you want it to have a great reputation, you're gonna, you wanna protect it, you want, you know, if you get that one star review, you're gonna take it personally, because it's your baby, I mean, you have four babies, it's your fifth it baby. Is, it is, Like, I look, I tell people all the time, like, you don't understand, you don't, why don't, what makes you think that I would not take care of this for you? Right. I was like, this baby supports my other babies. Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, so like, I'm gonna do everything I can to, to make you, you know, like satisfied, happy, like whatever. I mean, we want we want to figure out and get to the root of it and make sure that one that you, that you leave happy, that we get it taken care of. But two, figure out what went wrong so it doesn't happen for future customers. Yeah. And and we're constant and that. But honestly, it kind of goes back to what we talked about months ago, which is the core values. It mm -hmm. comes down to those core values that we have in our organization that just say this is who we are. This is these are our accountability factors and that UCE. That ultimate customer experience, that number one core value. I mean, it it defines so much here in this organization. Yeah. So I'm. It's it's funny because I sat down with some business owners um, not too long ago, and they were actually they were actually thinking about bringing me in to um, to do like a customer service series with their team. Like, hey, would you come in and like talk about the UCE and and help us brainstorm some ways we might be able to 
you know, incorporate that into our business. I was like, yeah, great, like I'd be happy to. And I go and I sit down with them and I start asking them some questions and I get I get to their, you know, start just digging, finding out like what's, what's going on. And, um, and ultimately I just found out that they kind of reached the same stage we had reached, you know, several years ago where they got to like the eight to 10 people and they really didn't have that clear vision. They didn't have that clear, you know, that mission statement saying this is why we're showing up to work every day. And they didn't have values defining on how like that, that those accountability factors, those verbs that say, okay, this is who we, you know, create and recreate the ultimate customer experience, keep promises, communicate clearly, like these different things that just, you know, paid the way. Yeah. Um, and I say, you know, if you want me, I'd rather come in and help you establish those things first because that is, that's the foundation. Yeah, it's the messaging. You know, so. And sure. to kind of cycle back on that point, um, that's the reason Jackie chose Mary Wise, you have volleyball coach Mary Wise. I mean, to this day, and I'd like you to kind of speak a little bit more on that, that team that you played for that lost in the national championship game. Still probably the best team in Gator you just history. just had to bring it up, didn't you, <laughs> time. Um, had to bring it up. <laughs> you know, but the, it was that was kind of the era where you have volleyball kick started. You know, in the 90s, it was football. In the early 2000s, you know, it was basketball. That was volleyball's kind of kick started, at least to me, um, being here. Um, you know, you chose Mary because she had good messaging and she has leadership and and her kind of referral basis is the former players. And, it, mm. you know, volleyball's still going strong to this day. They're always in the mix each year. And uh, I actually met with Taylor Williams the other Aww. day. Taylor Durant now. T-Dub. Does, yeah, she does an awesome, <laughs> awesome storytelling series. Yeah. She does. I've got Just, to get to an event. Taylor, yeah. if you're listening, I love you. I'll be at one of your shows. Yeah, what an amazing person. <laughs> she has guts and glory, GNV. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. But just speak on kind of that, uh, you know, that UF volleyball kind of mentality and then how close knit the community still is, oh my. you know, after graduation to the to this day. Wow. Well, there's, you know, I could talk all day about, you know, Gator Volleyball and Mary Wise. Um, it really is a family. We actually just had a reunion in February. Uh, I mean, people from Mary's first team here, it was like 1991, they were here with their kids. And then the people who just graduated, you know, they were here as well. Um, it was like a three day event. Um, and most of us know each other. You know, there are a lot of programs where like the girls from the 90s have no idea who the girls on the current team, you know, are right now. We're not like that. And I think that's why she's had such success is because she picks people, you know, to play for her who aren't just good volleyball players, but who care about Gator volleyball, who care about being a family, care about, you know, being in each other's lives. Um, I can't tell you how many weddings I've been in, you know, and they, like I said earlier, they were all in ours. Um, We've, everyone invites Mary to their wedding and she comes when she can. She came to ours. She actually, um, it was just her and I, the last people in the dressing room on wedding day. And she walked me to the doors of the church so my dad could walk me down the aisle. And I will never forget that. It was just one of the coolest moments. But that is why she is the best. It's because she does stuff like that. Volleyball is great. You know, she knows her stuff. We all know that. But it is... It's the other things, you know, that she does for each and every one of us, not just, you know, not just the ones who live in Gainesville, but everybody else. She's got players everywhere. Um, that's that's kind of one of the things that I recognize. I feel lucky because, you know, when you're 16 years old, you're being recruited. Um, you just feel like oh, I want to win a national championship. You know, that's all you care about. Um, but I feel lucky that I recognize what an amazing person she was and all the people around her who worked for her and with her you could tell that they felt the same way and i feel lucky that i found that out at an early age and i decided to come here and it was pretty cool for me um, even though i played for the gators i still feel like i'm kind of a fan <laughs> Not just a former player, but Alex laughs at me all the time about this because I loved those 90s girls, you know, because I was just starting volleyball. I started really late and I was a real student of the game. I used to, on VHS, record every game, you know, any college game that came on TV, I recorded it. Didn't matter who it was. And being from California, most of those were uh, Stanford, UCLA, UOP, you know, all those schools. Santa Barbara was really good back then. And... I caught a Florida volleyball game. They were in the final four 
and I was just waiting for the Long Beach Penn State match. And I was like, gosh, they have the cutest shoes. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's a woman coach. She's a female in the final four. And I was like, well, all right, I'll watch this. And then just the stories they were telling about her while the game was on, I was like, wow. Well, if they ever recruit me, I'd like to meet her. Yeah. You know, I always thought I was going to be a USC Trojan. Um, I'm glad I glad I wasn't. Nope. And <laughs> even though they ended up, you know, beating us. Yeah. Uh. In the final four, every you know, they ended our season three out of the four seasons you know that I was playing. Um, and it was all your friends. All my friends. It's so terrible. <laughs> oh yeah, gosh. they beat you in the final four, and then they beat us for the national championship match. Then afterwards, you know, we're all sad, and my friends are down the hall. Jackie, you did so well. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> for whatever that made me think of that. Did you see that viral video with the the pitcher that struck out his? Oh, like his yeah. high school friend and like that immediately so cool. like runs up and like hugs him. No. Yeah, like he I guess he was pitching and like struck him out to win to win the state game that was going to mm-hmm. send him to the state championship and he like immediately runs up and instead like all you know the whole team rushes out and instead of like the whole joining in the whole team getting hyped like he runs to home plate and like yeah. just embraces his friend his, it was a pretty, that's what pretty, my friends did yeah <laughs> and it didn't make me feel better <laughs> jackie's like Shut I, up. I see him now and i'm still like geez you have two of those rings um <laughs> but i would not trade my time here to have two national championship rings at another school i am like heck yeah man i did this i'm glad i'm here i also feel if i hadn't come here I wouldn't have this super cool dude as a husband and you know we're pretty we love our kids and this is like this is just the best possible (laughs) you know when you're 17 you don't think wow you could meet your husband and you could you know live here forever and have all these kids and just one decision one great decision that I made has just turned out to be like the best life ever yeah (laughs) so I'm really pumped what's what's your favorite part about Gainesville Florida you know what I have to admit, at first, when I realized that we were going to be living here, like as adults, I was a little bit like, what? Because, you know, when you're 17 through 21, this is a really cool place to be. And you're on the southwest side of town. You don't know anything about anything that has to do with families, church, you know, schools. And I thought, how are we supposed to live here? Like, it was so cool. Like, when we were young, like, what are we going to do now? And I think that it's better living in Gainesville when you're you know, grown up and with family, even then when you're young with no responsibilities, I think this is such a great place. Uh, so many free things too for people with families. Um, I, we love our school, yeah. our kids' school that they go to. I just, we go I to know, Depot this is Park a, great place. a lot. We, we like all the events that are at Depot Park. We love the downtown area. So, like, whenever we go, like, trekking four kids to go out to eat is anywhere. It's like a trip. Anywhere. So, well, the, what kind of car do you guys have? We have Suburban, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the extra long one, so I can fit the stroller in the back, too. Um, but we really love, like, food like brunch type stuff like the kids like it too and we like family fun places where you can eat so the top is usually That's like their one of, favorite like for one of our favorites yeah it's um, a good one we love curie on the drag because they have that big playground in the back so if we want to and order, the velociraptor how many yeah. places oh, have a velociraptor <laughs> yeah, the um, velociraptor the was stage. the first picture ever put on best of gainesville is oh. it really oh. yeah. it's circle. bella it's bella my dog and uh, the vol- velociraptor the velociraptor <laughs> made episode two of my good. vlog, yeah, like from in a, NSFL TV when we were putting it on there, like I think it's episode number two. I actually think the episode's called Raptor Selfie. <laughs> <laughs> now I just want some jackfruit quesadillas from Curia. That's all I can think about. Our now. girls just want to hang out on the stage. Yeah, They're the big bus in the back. Yeah, mommy, look at there's so, going to be so many listeners that are like, "What are you guys talking right. about, Velociraptor?" <laughs> right. So if you don't know about Curia and the Dragon Games, we'll go check it out because uh, they have a, a Velociraptor. You know, Gainesville, <laughs> they have a lot of um, great like sports and activities for young kids. You know, starting at four years old, five years old. Um, I know that uh, I've lived in quite a few places. I know a lot of places aren't like that, so that was pretty cool for us. Um, our girls dance. Yeah. They go to Cameron Dance Center. We love you guys. Um, <laughs> you can start there at two and a half years old. I danced too. Did you know that? It, no, you didn't. No, not like professional, not like like dance studio dance, but yeah, you get a few shots of me. You'll see some cool dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> No. Sorry, I took it to a different level. <laughs> took it to a different place. 
<laughs> and then obviously you always can fall back on the Gator sporting events. Like oh. there's a ton of them that are super family friendly. The baseball games, softball games, volleyball games. Um, football is a little hard when they're that young, but we've done it. We've taken them and it's been fun. Um, oh, rainy games and yeah. all with the ponchos that you didn't want to get. Yeah. And I was like, give me one. And it starts pouring. <laughs> like it's not going to rain two seconds later. It's pouring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but those are good, good times. Yeah, Gainesville's yeah. a wonderful place. To have a family or not have a family it really we've been here the whole time i feel like people say oh where are you from i need to stop saying california because i've been here since i was 17 <laughs> 34 now yeah <laughs> you know that goes by so fast right i know it feels I know. like yesterday i was in college seriously it really does yeah. i feel like that too and then i look down at all my kids and i'm like oh wow <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yeah, and then like in 06, 07, you're like, oh yeah, class of 2004, that was no big deal. Now when you say that, people are like, dang, you're old. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they look at me and they're like, you're old. I'm like, I got a yeah. fax the other day that was like, uh, we need records on this patient what's that was a, born. Hey, what's a fax machine? Oh, I know. Sorry. We're still, <laughs> we're still old school. Um, she said VHS earlier, so we're just bringing it all I back. Know. Um, they were like, I need a records on a patient born in 97. I'm like, I don't have any 10-year-old patients. Like. Who, who are they talking about? And I'd be like, oh, 97 was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. That is crazy. We took the girls shopping um, the other day, and this man in line, I, he, he said, oh, my gosh, Jackie Robinson. You played, what, 2008, 2009? I was like, 2003. <laughs> he goes, oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I said, thank you. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> You're like, yep. Terrible. Yeah, I know Not how that sold. feels. So, cool. We're going to start wrapping this thing up, but I have, I want to ask you guys um, just one last question. And if that's like, what, what advice can you give to other business owners that have the husband-wife combo? Don't be afraid. Just do it. You know, I was working another job, and he really was like, come work with me. Like you've been, you know, behind the scenes this whole time anyways, like you might as well hang out with me in the office. And, you know, I just say, you know what? Yes, just take that leap of faith. Just do it. I liked it, it's really fun. I'm actually not in the front desk anymore, but I'm still behind the scenes. You know, now we have this baby and I was like, four is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna quietly, you know, back out a little bit. But, um, so we still do work together in that sense. But I would just tell people, just go for it. You might actually really enjoy it. You hear a lot of horror stories, but it's not like that at all. Mm -hmm. If you like who you're married to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Father, early yes. Father's Day, right? She's being nice. No. You have the um, coolest gift coming. All right, oh, can't right. wait. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kind of what she said, just take that leap of faith. People always ask, they're like, man, how do you work with your wife? Don't you ever need a break kind of thing? Um, we aren't like literally sitting next to each other 24 seven at the office. So she still has her time where she's at the front or I'm in the back doing things. Um, where if Tyrus texting me, I can be texting him back there. Like it's still my own time, it's still her own time, but we have this common goal, which is to grow this practice together. And like I said earlier, nobody's gonna care about it as much as your spouse. So. Um, just do it, do it, and don't look back. Awesome. You have anything else, man? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, thank you guys for coming back to Gainesville. I think it's, mm -hmm. you know, people like you guys that are trying to do exactly what, you know, we're hoping to do and what these other people that have been on the podcast, we definitely need to get Mary and Mark Wise on the podcast. Yes. Be awesome. That'd be awesome. Yes. But, uh, you know, it's the only way it's going to, you know, keep getting better and better as, you know, we've gone away, they went away, I've moved back, they've moved back. You know, it's just, it's growing and growing, but it's the people first that bring the businesses. And uh, you know, you guys are employing people now, so you're creating those opportunities for other people to, you know, start families or stay in town after they graduate. And it's just a really, a really cool thing. And it's, uh, I'm glad you guys came on. Yeah, thanks, Aww, man. Thanks yeah. for having us. Really. Thank you. That's and real so quick, well, sweet. like, so, and what's that like when you like? How does that feel when you bring on that first, you know, employee? You know that, and you're and you're contributing. You know, you're paying somebody's salary. Right. So <laughs> I don't. I guess that's like the big picture. I don't think about it like that big. But I guess when you sit back and you kind of look at it, that's awesome. Like it's really cool to get. Like the girl I just hired just moved here from Alabama. She's 21. Was born um, on the outside of Gainesville. Moved away for a little bit, and now she's coming back too. She, you know, got a job, and it's really cool to be able to help somebody out get started. Um, 
and just fall in love with Gainesville like we have. It's more purpose, right? It's just mm-hmm. fulfilling. It's cool. It is. Well, tell us where uh, everybody can find you. So, physical address, 4114 Northwest 13th Street. We are about two houses south of Sandy's Consignment Shop. Um, we are on Facebook at Access Chiropractic Gainesville. Uh, we are on Instagram as Access Cairo GNV, and our website is accesschirognv.com. And awesome. you can find me in my suburban toting my children around town to all the cool things that Gainesville has to offer. Top down chrome spinning. Well, that's me. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again so much for being here. Thank you to everybody tuning in to the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that just make you go, whoa. We appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. See you later. Thank you. Say bye. Thank you. Bye.